All right. Well, then I guess let's go find our, our grading thingamajigger on the old Revy Deuce website or Discord page. Where did he put that? Let's go find it. I know he just posted it. There it is. All right. Okay. So let's grade Voyager month number two. What is my ops level? Well, I'll start with this account. And I am in the US based area. All right, let's grade our officers. So this month we had Janeway, who I think is a pretty good officer. And then we've got Harry Kim and Tom Paris, who for the life of me right now, I'm not going to remember what they do. So let's go look them up right here, you know. Oh, I'm going to have to go to the official one for this. Hang on. stfc.space Okay. Apparently you can't just search by officer groups. That'd be too easy. All right, so let's take a look at our officers real quick. Harry Kim, officer ability, giving slight increase to reputation gains. I mean, it's okay. Every little bit counts when you're trying to grind a billion or 15 billion to get to the next lock. Sure, every little bit counts. Is a Janeway crew going to be more useful than a Strange New Worlds crew? Uh, time will tell on that one. It's also going to have to do with tiering and scaling because by this point in time, like their abilities might be better, but there are, these guys are also Tier 1 or Tier 2 officers compared to, at this point in time, a lot of people have Strange New Worlds officers, you know, Tier 4 or maxed, right? You have probably have some of the rares maxed. You, you know, Pike and Hammer might be like Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4 at least. So uh, is the Voyager crew going to replace them as a hostile grinding crew? Maybe in time, but today... I don't think Harry Kim's ability at Tier 1, 2, or 3, much like many of these officers, is justifiably worth the officer slot. Same thing with his below deck ability. 10%, 15%, never going to happen. Can't rely on it to ever really happen. It's not until you get the 30% that you can say, okay, this might actually happen and be worth building around in a fight. One out of three rounds, but again, it's also only applying for that round. So getting morale very sporadically, eh. Realistically, you need him to tier four at 60% to feel confident about the ability actually triggering enough throughout the course of a, you know, 5, 10, 15 round fight to make it worth using. So. Oh, I can sort by group. Well, there you go. Thank you, Frankie. Forgot about that being there. Tom Paris was our second officer. What do we got? When you take damage, he increases your critical hit damage basically for the rest of the round. Again, kind of an eh ability because, you know, you have to get shot. You have to actually take damage. So once you start mitigating all the damage to the shield like Janeway's ability does, well, then he's not really boosting anything anymore. 
because now you're not taking damage and now he's not triggering critical hits also. It's kind of a slow this, and it doesn't carry over. It's only for one round, so it's the rest of that round. So how many more shots do you have after you got hit and took damage? Maybe the first shot, sure. This is not much of an increase. Again, not very good. Below deck, adding some mitigation, we like that. But again, you need him really teared up a bit before you're going to notice uh, a good value there. Janeway we like. Adding the isolytic damage is nice. Certainly going to open up some options with her. As for her ability, it's more of a very similar to what Pike does, dumping more of the damage into the shields. This can get to a full 100% increase, so got a lot going on there. can't hit traders because there's not enough guns for Janeway to do her thing. Well, that's also kind of a thing if you're trying to hit capital traders, right? They only shoot once per round. So the first time they hit you, now you've taken your hull damage. Now she's going to increase your shield mitigation. And then they don't shoot you again. So that doesn't really do anything. Now people are trying with, you know, a, a Picard Beverly or a Pike Moreau build where you put, instead of putting Chen in, you put Janeway in that third slot to get a damage boost. And she's going to add some extra isolytic damage, you know, 20, 30 percent additional damage on top, uh, depending on what you can get your isolytic up to or what her ability is up to, how that's going to be modified by those two officers, by Pike or, or Picard. And that's got some potential, too. But I, on paper, I mean, again, I'd have to actually sit down and do the math. My initial gut reaction is it's not going to work out better than... Other officer combinations we already have for, for those types of particular fights. Now there's other fights she might make more of a difference in. She might do better against freebooters or something like that where they shoot a lot more often. Uh, or even like Borg probes or those kinds of things. So there's all kinds of extra things that uh, she could certainly add some value to. And as we get the rest of the, the Voyager crew, there'll be some better builds that will emerge. Just have to give it a little more time. So in the grand scheme of things, where do I give the officers? Do I think they're a must-have? No. Is one officer a must-have? I would say Janeway's probably a must-have. Because I feel like where they're going to go in the future, you're really going to end up wanting to have her. But, you know, we don't have any type of defined sourcing path. for these officers. So the best I could give this is a B. It could also potentially be a C. It's kind of like in that B minus C plus range, which I feel is like where they live. It's like where they aim everything they can. So we'll, we'll err on the side of caution and we'll give them a B. will be good if there is consistent sourcing for these officers post arc most need to be tier 3 or higher to really have reliable abilities All right. The ship itself. Well, I don't have Voyager, so it's kind of hard to grade this. Kind of hard to grade this, but I can give some thoughts on what I think about it based on what I've read and what I can see in the graphics and things. So if we go back over to here, we go home, we go to our ships. And we go to the USS Voyager. We've compared this ship before to other ships. You know, the base stats of the ship itself are not very impressive. Even if you're just going to like tier 4, tier 5, which is about where you can get it before you kind of get your first ops lock, I think is right here. Um, 
you know, it's got lower DPR and things like that compared to other ships, but it has the refinery. The refinery gets you the materials you need to do the research. The research then ends up making it better than the other ships, but, you know, there's a process to it. Coming out of the box day one, it's not better than a lot of your other ships. Neither was the Defiant, neither was the Talios. Neither is the Titan. Titan's really more of a support ship, but that's what we've had recently in terms of ships. It's not until you get into the research that Voyager starts to get better, and it's through abilities like Voyager Tactics, when now when you're doing your hostile grinding and you're getting a 300% scaling upward, maxing out at 5,000% someday. Yeah, when you're doing 5,000% more damage to hostiles, okay, now Voyager suddenly becomes a lot better at hostile grinding than a lot of other ships. And now some of the scales along the way. Um, it does better against, you know, it has its own ability that gives you a bonus and a benefit against uh, your species 8472 stuff, right? That's its ship ability. Against hostiles with the DQ tag. Okay, so all of the, the Delta Quadrant stuff. You start off with a nice little bonus right here. Starts at 50k at Tier 1. And then it starts to scale up pretty quickly here. Tier 2, Tier 3. You're talking about 80,000%. So really getting pretty quickly very useful for the thing that it's meant to do. Like all specialty ships. Uh, and then it's going to take a little while longer to get through some of the other mechanics before it gets more of a universal appeal to it. So, it will be built and have priority in upgrading. Mm, that I don't know. I feel like this again falls more into this B category. Upgraded just for niche use, because it's not going to be an everyday ship. I mean, eventually it could be. That's the thing with it. Eventually it probably could become an everyday ship. But we're talking light years down the road, so. Divinity is going with a big A. Jockey Whale says he thinks it's a really good ship, but it's another long grind. Hey, Cap Jesse, welcome on in. Frankie says that tearing it up doesn't impact the refinery outputs enough to make it a priority for upgrading. Yeah, we're probably going to go with, nope, we're going to go probably with again with a B on the ship. <clears throat> Not good right out of the box. We'll take some time not only to tear up, but also to complete the multiple researches necessary to give it universal appeal. All right. Let's talk about, we are starting to talk about the Voyager refinery. I can't show it to you because I don't have it. Um, but <sighs> it's a complicated refinery. There's a lot of stuff going on to it because you're killing and you're mining and you're doing a lot of different things, which kind of feeds into this. Um, again, haven't done the loop. From what I've seen on paper, it looks pretty complicated. There's certainly a lot of parts going on, a lot of moving parts. It's a seven-step loop between you're using Voyager to kill the Species 8472 stuff, to or you're killing the Herogen to get the one particle, to refine that, to then get, you know, use the ship ability to then make the hidden ships appear so you can kill them so you can get the other material that can then get you the tokens, that can get you into the systems where you can then mine the third material that you can refine. It's like, <clears throat> you know, it's a, every day is a scavenger hunt, right? Um, and it it's probably got one or two steps too many. So I think this particular little loop here on paper 
probably going to get a D. And then the Voyager refinery itself probably is going to get a C because it's tied to an overly complicated loop. All right, the last thing we've got here. Isolytic damage seems pretty good. The sourcing for the artifacts is just going to take a while to really get to, so we'll probably give that a B. And then we've got the field training update, which I do want to take a look at in-game real quick. So your field training update, we did get this little Voyager loop here. Step one is to build Voyager. So you can't do that until you get the ship. So if you're going completely free to play and you didn't take that, you're at least, a, or you didn't have the option to because you're starting the game, you know, the day after the Voyager arc ends. If you started the game today, you know, constructing Voyager is going to take you 100 days once you get there. Then you have to do this, killing them, which you can do ahead of time. These you can only do once you actually have the ship. This is all harvesting and mining. Then you get into this section out here, which is killing the DQ hostiles. 6,000, it's a pretty decent chunk of hostiles to kill. It's a lot of grinding. And this is all stuff that's related to the, the different loops within the Voyager refinery and stuff like that. So... While it's very nice that they did give out the 1,200 dolomide particles and that there is a path, this is a long path to get to, starting with the 100 days needed to first build the ship before you can even start the rest of the path, which may take you, you know, another 100 days, I don't know offhand, to actually do all this stuff once you have Voyager. So it's nice that we're getting a Prime free to play. Absolutely love that. But can't really say for certain today exactly what the timeline is to get through all that. So, so we'll give this a B as well. Because we are going to end up getting your choice of a, of a couple different primes for free. Which we do like. We do like seeing that added, so... Voyager loop appears to have too many steps, but can't say for certain since I won't unlock the ship for another couple of weeks. So this overall, I guess we're going to give the feature a C for the month. If you're kind of averaging these together, a D and a C average to a C. So then we've got two you know, C and two Bs. And yeah, I think we'll just go with that. Jules Verne said about 200 days. Not sure what ops that is. Lloydson thinks it was almost two years is what DJ said on a stream. That seems excessive. So I think if you have to wait 100 days to get Voyager, and then once you do, if you can start doing all the other steps in the process through all the different milestones, I don't think it's, it's a two full year commitment to do that. So... I think you're looking, again, probably another 100, 150 days after you build the ship. So we're probably talking about, what, eight to nine months in total. Jules is in the chat right now. Jules says he thinks it's closer to 1,000 days. Just so we're clear for, Claire, you know, for all of those who may be watching this later. You think it's going to take a thousand days to unlock Voyager and go through this particular tree? Harvesting the samples, killing the hostiles, making the trades, harvesting all this stuff for the Commerce Insignia token one specifically? You think this one takes forever? 
Commerce in, in, in Insignia Token Milestone takes three years without additional sourcing. Oh, my. Well, see, again, don't have the ship, so can't say for certain. Also, don't forget up here, you also do get a few more officer shards, by the way, along the way, as you get eight points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight things in here. So you will pick up a couple extra Harry Kim shards and some parts and things for your ship and some commerce insignias, right? Woohoo! <laughs> you get 100 of them. You got to trade 100,000. I don't know that this is really helping a whole lot. They gave you 300. You need 100,000. That might take a while. Yeah, without knowing exactly what their costs are within the refinery. It's hard to say exactly how long this milestone will take, but people in the chat are saying it's going to take forever. So, okay. Now, Jules is also saying that, uh, you know, Commerce Insignia may have a greater role moving forward. So sourcing for those may improve in future months. And that's also true because we may, you know, again, there's still two months, two months most likely left in this arc. So we're going to see exactly where things are going to go from here in terms of both officer sourcing and ship parts and mechanics and loops and things. There's certainly more things that could come and be adjusted as we go on. If, as it stands today, if that's true and that insignia sourcing really is that difficult, well, then this has to be a C. Because it's nice that you have it, but it's so far in the future that it might as well not even be there. So, How far are the people that do have Voyager? Take that number and run it out. There you go. For those of you in the chat right now who have Voyager, let's go to your field training. How many trade, commerce, insignia tokens have you done? What is your number written right here? Hi, Lube, and all 29 people rating in. Thank you very much for coming on over. Denver says you got bonus tokens for buying the ship. Well, that's also true. <laughs> What's going on? A says you've got 1,500 tokens. So you're basically getting, what, 100 a day? Yeah. Jules is up to 3,900, but he's been doing a lot of grinding. Frankie's bought the ship, got the bonus. He's about 3,800 as well. And then obviously you tear the ship up and stuff. You get to use the refinery again or multiple things there too. So, yeah, so this is definitely going to be a bit of a roadblock. Okay. Yeah, you guys are currently kind of low. 4,100, 2,900. Swami Gooner, welcome on in. Thank you for being here. Lightning Hawk, good to see you again. Olvi, what's going on? Yeah, so that's a pretty pretty darn long time if, if we're sticking with the current sourcing for that. Uh, commerce Insignia... Uh, seem to have slow sourcing right now which makes field training excessively long to complete okay let's see what else we got here all right so we're up to the event calendar double sharp what's going on I do not speak French, but bonjour.
and I get the field training not meant to be completed immediately, but six to 12 months is kind of a reasonable timeline to grind something out free to play. If you're talking about 24 plus months, you might, why even have it? Because by the time that you actually get the thing two years from now, it's going to be worthless. The game's going to have power crept up so much. You know, if I went back in time and I told you, hey, look, we've done it. We put the things in the treasury, right? That was that was barely a year ago. That you could come in here to the territory tree and you could get these primes. Ooh, increase base damage against player ships by 150%. Well, two years later, I managed to get enough particles to get this thing unlocked. Ooh. The game has power crept up so much. You've got so many other things adding to base damage. You've got so many other things adding to protected cargo. Where's the third one? Prime capture node damage. Yeah, I can actually do this one now, too. Increasing your damage while you're on a capture node. Ooh, I got to make sure to do that one next time there's a, a leaderboard event. You know, the buffs and bonuses they give aren't that great anymore. They were okay when they came out. Now, obviously, the ones in the, the field training are better, right? These, these are much better. Reducing the cost of your, your ship parts and stuff, much better. But if I told you it was going to take you two years to get this for free, by the time you get around to that, who knows what else is going to have happened. So, yeah. Alright, so let's move on. How do we feel about the event calendar? The calendar itself for the month was pretty good. There weren't a lot of Voyager-specific events. Like, every event it seemed like you could do whether you had the ship or not. Obviously, having Voyager might, might have made it a little easier to do certain things. Um, they also did a very good job overlapping events, which I think was nice. Uh, releasing, you know, some of the ways that they released the... Um, Aloha to you too, sir. Hello, Dr. Iron Chef. Feeling better, bud, I hope? I know you was a little under the weather recently. But, um... Holodeck missions, Queen's Gambit, like they staggered the releases. So that they were released on days where the events kind of lined up a little bit more with what was going on in the game. And a number of other events kind of overlapped. So you were doing one thing, killing hostiles, but it might, if you killed the right hostiles, it might actually score in two or three events. Um, so I feel like they did a very good job with that. Did it really keep with the theme of the arc? Mm, some did, some didn't. I feel like we're right here in a solid B. The rewards were, you know, were pretty decent and stuff like that. I think everything was pretty, pretty good. The PvP events, the little four, one and a half hour mini events. See, once they fixed it, so you stopped killing empty bases, um, it certainly got harder to find people with only an hour and a half window. So I think we're going to have to give this a C. Also, the fact that these windows didn't start when the other events reset also made it a little more complicated. Because people will log on at event reset, you know, at noon or at 6 o'clock to see, oh, well, here's the new event, let me do these things. Um, but then, like, to hang around for an hour to wait for the PvP event to start isn't always feasible. So I feel like by not having the events line up, it also kind of threw a bit of a monkey wrench into some of those things, too. Good, I'm glad to hear you're feeling better. Hi, Lube. Good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Lloydson didn't like the event at all. I thought it was okay. Again, you know, the, in the beginning where you just killed a dead base, it was kind of boring and defeated the purpose. But that was a lot of PvP events. But they seem to have found a way to, to code the game properly to fix that mechanic going forward. And we'll see where it goes from here. Now it is just going to be, you know, it's it's server-wide PvP, so you can hit whatever you want. Hit some mining ships, hit some Franklins, hit some Stellas, call it a day. 
Uh, but it is only for an hour and a half window, so at least there's that benefit. Good job overlapping events. Um, as for which heroic version I prefer, I'm going to skip that question because I'm going to do that separately because there's a lot of math involved comparing the two uh, event styles side by side. Actually, I can give my answer. It's, it's this one right there. It's the doctor. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> You're going to see why when I do some of the math. All right. Great in communication. <laughs> D. Definitely should have announced that there was a second SMS for Janeway that started once the first was completed. This is a huge letdown by the C. <laughs> this is a huge letdown to the community as many players did not know or did not claim their rewards after f completing the first SMS and therefore did not score for the second SMS. So that was the trick. You did the SMS with Janeway. You finished it. But if you hadn't actually clicked the button to claim your Janeway shards from doing it, it didn't trigger the next one to start. So then you would still be spending and spending and spending. Or if you just happen to pick, like if you only needed 50,000 points to get to finish up your, your event and you spent enough materials to get a million points, those extra 950,000 points didn't roll over from the first one to the second one. They were just gone. That was just, you spent more than you needed to. Great, now you're done. Now here's the new event that's going to start that resets the score to zero. Uh, so yeah, this definitely should have been announced, should have been communicated properly from the beginning that, hey, here's what we're trying this time around. And it was a big miss. Big miss. So. It's been about, yeah, to finish both heroics, but zero score on the second one. Exactly, Olvi, exactly. So they're going to get a D for that one. Uh, as far as game stability, <sighs> well, let's see. We had a couple servers crash and go completely offline for hours. Uh, they had to get comp chests. Uh, we had a lot of issues with lag and things and the things not spawning right and servers being in uh, server instability and people getting kicked off. So we're going to have to say C. I know they try and blame Amazon for it, but ultimately it's not Amazon's fault. If you're hosting your game on their servers and their servers are unreliable and keep crashing and giving you a poor product, well, then either you need to upgrade your service with them to a higher tier to give your clientele a more stable product, or you need to find a new place to host your game other than them. You can't just keep blaming Amazon for all your problems. And that's <laughs> exactly what I'm right here. You can't keep, keep blaming all your problems on Amazon. It's your responsibility to find, <laughs> to use a host that can deliver stable content to your audience. Pam.
All right, so overall, there we go. Submit it, send it on over. And for those of you who are looking to do the survey yourself, let me go find the link on Discord. I will put that in the chat right now. There's the link to the Google form that Rev Deuce and his team have put together for this particular month. And that concludes Voyager. So overall, as a whole, Voyager gets probably like a C grade. Somewhere in the middle there. Yeah. I feel like there's still some issues. You know, with game stability. There's still some issues with scoring and whatnot. And just some other stuff that just didn't quite work out real well. Uh, I do need to load up my 118 account <laughs> simply because I forgot <laughs> how long I put my shield up for this morning.